Okay, so if you open up your notes to Lesson 1-5, it's down here on page 6. That's where it's starting. We're going to do a real quick review of four different properties. Um, I'm going to pause the video in, in between. But uh, commutative properties of addition and multiplication, what that is, is that is just changing the order of the numbers there. Now, again, if we change the order of 2 plus 5 and we just said it's 5 plus 2, don't we still get 7? So that's the commutative property of addition. Over here is the commutative property of multiplication. It's just 5 times 2. See how we're just changing the order and we still get the same answer. Now, for the associate properties of addition and multiplication, what we're concerned with is not necessarily the order, but how we would group it. And if you recall, we've done the order of operations, and grouping is usually parentheses, maybe brackets or absolute value symbols, right? And so that's what's going to happen here. So what's happening here, and again, instead of just group, I should put it as grouping. You know, there's nothing that's grouping these numbers. And so if we put parentheses right here around the 4 and the 7, that would mean please add them first. 4 plus 7 is 11. 11 plus 3 is 14. But then if we wrote down the 4 plus 7 plus 3, it would still equal 14. But if we move the grouping symbols, if we move the parentheses over, we haven't changed the order. It was just how we grouped them. 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 plus 4 is still 14. The same thing's happening up here for the multiplication. If we said, hey, could you please do 2 times 3 first? Okay, that's 6. 6 times 5 is 30. That's not a big deal. Um, and again, we're not changing the order that the multiplication is written in. What we're changing would be what would you do first? So if I said, could you do 3 times 5 is 15? 15 times 2 is 30. That is the associate properties of addition and multiplication. These last two are very easy. Go ahead and put the G on there on the word nothing. Forgot about that. But the add additive property, that means you can add zero to anything and it changes nothing. So if I write five plus zero, we know it's still five. You know, add zero to anything, it does nothing. Now if I come over here to the multiplicative identity property, that's where we times anything by one and it changes nothing. So how about if I have a five? and we just times it by 1. Well, 5 times 1 is 5. And that's the four basic properties there. The next one that we're going to look at, though, um, is the distributive property, and that is the one that you guys will definitely need. Before we get to the distributive property, let's go look at mental math here. Now, you can add these up any way that you want. It's the commutative property, right? It just depends which ones that you go. And again, this is at the, the top of page 7. This is at the top of page 7. Um, which two numbers could you put together that go together easier? I think the ones with the halves, right? The 0.5 and the 0.5. What's $2.5 plus $7.5? It'd be 10 bucks. And so that's the idea of like in your head, you're like, I think I would rather put these two together than this one that would come out to be about 7.8. You see what I'm saying? It gets a little messy. So if you can put two numbers together that go a little bit easier, it's, it's better that way. And then we can slide down the 5.3. And now that very quickly shows us that, hey, the final answer is 15 and 3 tenths. Now, if we go down just a little bit, and I know we've got this problem that we'll get to in just a second, we already have the answer of negative 280 here. So what's the fastest way of doing it? Well, you could say negative 5 times 7 is negative 35, and negative 35 times 8, you know, you'd have to work it out. But are there two numbers that you can put together where you go, hmm, that, that's a nice round number. It's an easy number. What about the 5, the negative 5, and the 8? Negative 5 times 8 is negative 40. And then the times by 7 is still sitting there. And if we just covered up the 0, well, 7 times 4 is 28, so 40 times 7 is 280. And we just got to check our signs. And so that is another example of how we can just do a little bit of mental math to make it a little, little bit easier. Now, I'm, I'm going to zoom in here just a, a little bit there. But 73 minus 58, you, you've seen it ever since grade school. Um, for me, I, I would try to break the small number apart. You know, what can I make the 50 into? How, could I break it up into 50 and then an 8? So in my brain, I'm just going to say 73 minus 50, and that gets us 23. But I took 8 off of the 58, so let's go take 8 off of the 23. And, and it's still not the easiest, but it's better than 73 minus 58.
And at this point, I would see that the answer is 15. Now, the next thing that we need to get into is the distributive property. And, you know, looking at the associative property, you know, well, not associative. If we look at the order of operations, 2 plus 7 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27, right? So that's, that's our final answer. But we, we need to teach you how to work with these, so that way when you come down and you have a letter, you'll know how to handle it. Okay? So I'm going to show you the distributive property. What that is is we take the outside number, and we say 3 times 2. So now this, this column, this is what goes on in your head. So you would not normally write this down on your paper, but you're like, hey, that's 3 times 2. Okay. Next, you look at the sign that's inside the parentheses. If there's a sign, we just haul that sucker out. Can you see that's a plus sign? Put your plus sign right here. And then we're going to use the outside number again, this 3, and it's going to times the other inside number. Now you can put arrows on there if you want, but that's going to be a 3 times 7 right there. I'm going to put an arrow right there. And so, if we come over here, this is what you would actually write on your paper. What is 3 times 2? 6. What's the plus? Well, that's just sitting there. And what's 3 times 7? 21. And what's 6 plus 21? It's 27, which, if we go all the way back to the beginning, if we go all the way back to the beginning, if we handled this normal, we just said 2 plus 7 is 9, and 9 times 3, that's also 27. So we understand that. So when we look at this, there's the problem that they give you, there's the stuff that you do in your head, there's some stuff you put down in your paper that helps you get the final answer. Now, this doesn't make a lot of sense when we have all numbers. I get that. But remember, I'm trying to set you up for what happens when we have a, a variable that we don't know what it is. Okay, so let's go do this one real quick. And this one's got a little bit different. We know that it's 5 times 8, so in our head we go outside number times inside number 5 times 8. So just go ahead and write it down for your notes. What is our sign this time, though? What's our sign? A it's a minus. So this minus is just sitting there waiting for us. And then we can come back through and we say 5 times 2. And we can just come right on through. And we ask ourselves, well, what's 5 times 8? 40. There's the minus sign, so just stick it right here. 5 times 2 is 10. And 40 minus 10 is 30. And let's go check to see that this distributive property is actually correct. I know that 5 is going to multiply all of this. But what's 8 minus 2? What's 8 minus 2? 6? Well, what's 6 times 5? 30. So this idea of multiplying the front number and multiplying the back number and just carrying the sign over and, care, and, and working it through, it gets us the same answer. It means it's safe. It means it's, it's a rule that we can follow in math. It's called the distributive property. Well, now we have a negative 3 on that side, and we're not going to panic because that's just negative 3. And it's timesing an unknown number. I know it's a letter, but it's an unknown number. So we're just going to write an x right beside it because that means negative 3 times x. What is the operator symbol we have inside of here? Plus. Put it right here. And now we're going to, in our heads, go, well, what's negative 3 times positive 2? So that means in our heads we're saying negative 3 times positive 2. And if we put it back together over here, we'll have the complete answer. It's negative 3x. There's the plus sign. And that is negative 6. Well, guess what your answer is? It's just this. It's negative 3x plus negative 6. I can't do the multiplication unless I know what that number is. So we just stop right there. We found the product. We know that it should be negative 3x plus negative 6. Now, there is no rule saying that the outside number must be on the left side. However, it seems like a lot of times it is. Okay, so just be on the lookout for when the other number is on the right side. And because they're having to show that the negative 2 is multiplying it, they have to use like a multiplication symbol or put it in parentheses. So this negative 2 is going to multiply the n plus 14 in parentheses. So all we're going to do is take this right side number and multiply it by the front just like that. So negative 2 times n. And I'm going to write the negative 2 times n. We normally like to write the number first and the variable second when we show it multiplying. 
what is the sign inside of here? This is the plus sign. Thank you. Very good. And then we can take the negative 2, and then we multiply the other number. And by the way, what we're doing is we're taking this outside number, we're multiplying everything inside the parentheses. So if there's like 14 different numbers in there, we will multiply it 14 different times. But thankfully, we've only got 2 right here. So negative 2 times 14. And you notice that I used parentheses there. I could have used the multiplication dot. I just I switched it up that time. Okay, so now if we come through here, this is what's going on in our head, right? There's there's the the what you do in your head. So now if we can just come over here and put it together, this will actually be our answer right here: negative two n plus negative twenty eight. And we can copy it down over here to make it nice and complete in our answer column. But this is our answer because we don't know what n is. So negative two n plus negative twenty eight. So please 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 be on the lookout on today's assignment when you've got to do the distributive property maybe the outside numbers on the left maybe it's on the right but when you have these variables right here just waiting for you inside you just go ahead and just have that outside number just multiplying it right there and then just multiply the second number you can do all of this in your head and you have this written down nice and neat on your paper right there okay You will also have a couple of questions that's like this. A teacher buys 20 supply kits at $5.90 each. Now, it's just asking you total cost. What, what would you do if you were at Walmart and you had to go buy these for the teacher? They gave you cash and, and you know, you had to prove how much you paid for it. Hopefully, you'd have the receipt. But what would you do with the 20 and the $5.90 each? If you got to buy 20 of them, what are you going to do? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide? You'd absolutely multiply. And so it says write an expression. Now it doesn't say algebraic, does it? It just says an expression. Well, that's just numbers doing math. So how about we take the 20, okay? How about we just we, we take the, the 20 and write it right there and put in parentheses the $5.90. Isn't that showing that it's multiplying? Okay? So because it's showing that it's multiplying, because it's showing that it's multiplying, we can do this one other trick. Now if you want, you can write 20 up there and, and 5.90 and you can do that multiplication. How many people hated that type of multiplication back in the day? Did you hate that in fifth grade? A lot of people did, but it's still valid and you can still do it and you would get the answer. Let's take a look at what we were doing up here. See how we were taking these numbers and we were multiplying it by two on the inside? So how about if we busted the $5.90 into two different numbers? How about two easy numbers? How about we have at 20 and we bust the five dollars off to the side and we add how many cents is that so how about we just add 90 cents does that does that make sense and now we can do the same thing and we go now wait a second I know what two times five is two times five is ten so it's twenty times five hundred bucks so that's a hundred but now here's this part and this is a lot easier than doing this $5.90 times 20. It's a lot easier than that. You could come over here and say 20 times 0.9. Now, wait a second, Mr. Tate, that's 0.90. Is 0.9 the same as 0 0.90? It's the exact same thing. So now 9 times 0 is 0, and 9 times 2 is 18. And then if you recall, you take a look at the entire problem, and you go, how many numbers are sitting to the right of the decimal. I see just one. So that means I gotta put a decimal right there so I've got one number sitting behind it. So it's it's a hundred dollars plus how much? Eighteen? So guess what my final answer is? It's a hundred and eighteen dollars. I think it's a pretty slick way of, of doing that. And just to prove to you, um, I've got my, my calculator right here and I'm gonna type in uh, five dollars and ninety cents times the twenty and of course my calculator goes away and it, it's died. Let me get a different one. Okay, there we go. I got my other calculator out. $5.90 times 20 of them, it's $118. It's exactly that. So that's what you would get if you did all of that. You might get faster at this, possibly doing it that way. So let's come down here and let's just do this. What would the total cost have been if each kit was $8.10? Well, how many did we have to buy? 20. So 20 times eight dollars and ten cents how can I bust this up because again I know I can do 20 
times eight dollars and ten cents I can still do it the old-fashioned way but let's bust this up let's pull the dollars out and add on the ten cents what would 20 times 8 be 160 and the plus sign just falls down just like that and so now I can do 20 times not point 10 can we shorten it point 1 well, that's 20. Look at your whole problem that's multiplying. I see one number to the right of the decimal, so that's going to put the decimal right there. So that's two bucks. What's 160 plus two bucks? 162 dollars. And let's just pull this one up right here. Let's just check it on our calculator here. What is 20 times eight dollars and ten cents? And you don't have to put that zero on the end of it, but a lot of people do. And there it is. It's 162 dollars. Hopefully, you'll be able to go through and use this distributive property to your advantage to kind of make some hard math a little bit easier. You will see some story problems like that. Let's get you started. Thanks, guys.